the handy cow key. Hello, good evening and welcome. It's Wednesday, it's 5.30, and you know what that means? It's the math show with me, Mr. Number Beta, live on Chalk Hill Community Radio Station. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, why have I, why was I playing that, that lovely piece of Ghana music just now? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. Today's show is about Mother Africa mathematical facts. I'm going to be teaching you, I'm going to be showing you about the importance of Africa as a continent on the development of maths over the years. Some of you will know that I'm from Ghana, and so the reason why I was playing that song was because I wanted to get myself into this afternoon. So one of my favourite songs, and you're going to hear it again later on, but today's show is all about maths as usual, but it's about the importance of Africa on the development of maths over the centuries. It's always a pleasure, it's always a pleasure and an honor to, to teach and to interview and to work with young people, teachers on the radio station, because we want people to see the attraction that maths can bring into our everyday lives. And some time ago, I was talking to a young person and I believe it was during Black History Month and they were asking me and they were saying to me, Mr. Lumbervator, I've heard this about Africa. I've heard this about maths. I've heard this about the connection between Africa and maths. And I want to know more. Well, today's show is exactly what is going to be happening. 
So I'm going to start off and I'm going to explain about Africa as a continent. And then I'm going to be explaining about the influence, the impact and the and the individualness of Africa on mathematics. So as I said, it's Wednesday, it's 5.30, and you've got me for the next hour. It's Mr. Number Vater, and today's show is about Mother Africa and maths. So where do we start? Well, we're starting with the second biggest continent in the world. But more importantly, I want to put Africa into some context, and obviously, I'm going to use numbers. I'm going to use numbers so that you can have a mental picture of exactly what we are dealing with and exactly what I am talking about. Okay, to date, now this is the latest up-to-date figure. To date, we have 195 countries in our world today. I'm going to repeat that number. We have got 100 and 95 countries that make up our world today. Now, when I say it's a fact, by that I mean it's been researched, it's been validated by, by the United Nations and so on and so on. So this is, this is the information that I can put out. This is the information that I can put out, yeah? So there are 195 countries that make up our world today. Right, now, in Africa, there are 54 countries, okay? 54 countries make up the continent of Africa as we know it. I mean, this, this 54 is a big number, but I'm going to reel off a couple of them, okay? We've got Ghana. We've got Nigeria. We've got, we've got Sierra Leone. We've got, there's so many countries, but there are 54 countries, 54 countries that make up the Africa continent. Egypt, Libya, Congo. There are, there's 54 countries. Now, I said to you, I said to you that there are 195 countries that make up our world today. Let's compare those two numbers. 54 countries in, in Africa, the continent of Africa, 195 countries in the world today. Let's do some rounding to make it easier. Let's round 195 up to 200 because remember when we're rounding one two three four we round down five six seven eight nine we round up so i'm going to round 195 up to 200 54 countries in the continent of africa one two three four we're going to round down so i'm going to round that number down to 50 how many lots of 50s are there in 200? There are four. 50 plus 50 is 100, plus another 50 is 150, plus another 50, and that makes 200. Right, okay. So, there's a helicopter going past, right. So we've got, so in other words, the 50 countries in the continent of Africa that makes up a quarter of the countries in the world. Can you imagine that? That is a quarter of the countries in the world. I'm going to say it again, 195 countries make up our world today. There are 54 countries that make up the continent of Africa. Now I've rounded 195 up to 200, and I've rounded 54 down to 50 just to make it easier and to put it into context. But can you see the number of countries in the continent of Africa compared to the total number of countries around the world? It's a quarter. 
Now, this is what makes Africa such a special continent. And later on in the show, when I start talking about the influence and the impact of Africa on maths, it's all going to become clear. Africa makes up one fifth of the total land surface on the planet of Earth. One fifth of the total land surface of the of the Earth. Can you imagine that? That is a lot of that is a lot of land. That is a lot of land. And that's the reason why we've got all of this wonderful information wonderful knowledge, wonderful education coming out of Africa. And it's going to be a really exciting show. So let me give you some more facts. So we've got 54 countries that make up the continent of Africa. Now, in the country Nigeria, there are 223 million 804,000 632 in the population. That is the biggest number of people in one country in Africa, Nigeria. 223 million, 804,632. That's a lot of digits. So if you want to visualize the number, it's 222, 803, 632. 223 million people, 804,632 live in Nigeria. Let's compare that to Ghana. Let's compare it to Ghana. 24 million, 121,955. Can you see the comparison between Nigeria and Ghana? 34, 34 million compared to 223 million. That's a big difference. Then you've got Sierra Leone. My mum was from Sierra Leone. 8,790,000 8, and 92. That is the population of Sierra Leone. Then you've got the Seychelles, 107,660. So the reason why I'm giving you these figures is because I want you to appreciate the size of the countries that make up the 54 countries in the continent of Africa. 223 million, that's the population that is the 2023 census. 223 million people live in Nigeria, compared to 34 million in Ghana, 8 million in Sierra Leone, and 107,000 in the Seychelles. I've just picked an example of some countries. Obviously, I'm going to pick Ghana. Obviously, I'm going to pick Sierra Leone, because obviously, they mean things to me. But I've just tried to give you a picture of Africa as a continent. Africa is home to the world's earliest form of mathematical thinking and the first known use of measurements, measuring and, calcul and calculations. Let me repeat that because that's a big statement. Africa is home to the world's earliest, the first, the world's earliest form of mathematical thinking and the first known use of measuring and calculations. That is amazing. Because what are we being told there? We're being told about the origins. We're being told about the beginnings. We're being, we're, we're, we're being told about how we can trace, how we can trace maths over the years, over the centuries. So that means this continent of Africa, our continent of Africa, is the birthplace of both basic and advanced maths. It is the, that is it, it's the birthplace. And these are facts that I'm giving to you. It's not me just creating it, these are facts. 
195 countries make up our world today. And 54 of those 195 countries are in the continent of Africa. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the, the importance and the enormity of those numbers? Now, the ancient Egyptians were looking at Egypt, top right, the top right. If you're looking at the map of Africa, the continent, the top right. Have you ever wondered and pondered how did the ancient Egyptians, how did they make the pyramids? How did they transport those big, massive blocks of stone to put them in the place, the right place, and build up to form the pyramid? That in itself is not just a human feat, it's a mathematical feat. And when I use the word feet, it's F-E-A-T, not on the ones on the bottom of your legs, F-E-E-T. It is a mathematical feat. When we talk about the ancient Egyptians and what the legacy that they've left behind, the pyramids, when you go and look at the pyramids and you marvel at the pyramids, it's hard to take it all in. It's hard to take it all in. Just how did they transport those blocks into place and those blocks of stone have lasted to the present day? And they are still uncovering artifacts, historical elements, historical finds from the, from the pyramids. That is what we're looking at. And that is what I'm talking about. Because it's all about maths. The weight of one of those blocks. How did they get it up to the top? You've got your height. And when you look at the pyramids, you've got your square base pyramids. You've got your triangular base pyramids. But how did they create them? That, to me, shows the power and the majesty of Africa. And I've got a quote here that was written by a, a, Ga a, a Ghanaian philosopher. And I'm going to read it out to you. I'm going to read it out to you twice because you need to hear it twice for it to have that impact. The nerve of the world has been deadened for centuries to the vibrations of the African genius mind. I'm going to say it again. The nerve, you know what it's like when you're having your tooth out at the dentist and the dentist touches that nerve, you go through the ceiling, right? That's what I mean by the nerve. The nerve of the world has been deadened, cut off for centuries to the vibrations of the African genius mind. What does that say? What does that say about Africa as a continent? But let's go, let's get into our, into our mathematical facts because it is the math show. And you know that I'm all about maths, I'm all about figures and numbers, but already I've given you figures and numbers. I've said to you, 195 countries make up our present world today. 54 of those 195 countries are in the continent of Africa. And Africa makes up one fifth of the total land surface of the earth. One fifth, that is incredible. Can you imagine the enormity, the size? But these are facts. And if we compare 54 countries in Africa to 195 countries around the world, it's about a quarter. So a quarter of the world's countries are in Africa. That is another mathematical, mathematical, amazing knowledge. But there's more. There's more. The oldest clay tablets with maths, the oldest clay tablets with maths that were found date back to 4,000 years ago in a country called Mesopotamia. Imagine that, 4,000 years ago, the oldest clay tablets with maths written on them date back 4,000 years ago in the country called Mesopotamia. Can you imagine that? This is, this is the importance. 
And I'm not even going to start about Timbuktu as being the centre, the centre where all maths originated from. It's like it's like that's the pot and everything just bubbled out of it. This is what this show is about today. So some facts. Africa is home to the world's earliest form of mathematical thinking and the first known use of measuring and calculating. This is an amazing this is an amazing statement to make at the start of this show. Africa is home to the world's earliest. When we talk about the words, uh, the world's earliest, it's the first. The so the world's first known form of mathematical thinking and the first known use of measuring and calculations. Now, look, come on. If it's if it's these are facts and they've been written down, there's the proof. It's not just me hearsay, it's me talking. Africa, the continent, is known as the birthplace of both basic and advanced maths. The continent, it is known, it is known around the world as the birthplace of both basic and advanced maths. Isn't that a lovely statement to, to, to listen to, to hear? And thousands of years ago, Africans used numerals, algebra and geometry in everyday life. That is how the ancient Egyptians got the pyramids to be where they are and how they got the stones up to the top of the pyramids. It has to have been through geometry and algebra and measuring. And what do we mean by geometry? Well, what I mean by geometry is things to do with angles. What is a right angle? What is an ob obtuse angle? Triangles, even the shape of the pyramid themselves. You know, how many, how many faces are there? Is it a square base pyramid? So you've got the square base at the bottom. And how many sides are there on a square? Well, there's four sides, which means there's four triangles that come up together to form the square base pyramid. Can you see how amazing, how miraculous the Egyptians were to have built the pyramids? Come on. That is amazing. And it's never been repeated to this day. And I don't think it ever will be. But this is what I want you to understand, my listeners. This is what I want you to appreciate. And when it comes to maths, this is all about numbers. I'm giving you numbers. African maths is the continent's single biggest contribution to humanity. African maths is the continent. So the continent of Africa our single biggest contribution to humanity is maths. Once again, isn't that, isn't that amazing? For me to even be saying that, I'm just, so, I'm just so proud and privileged and I'm humbled and it's a pleasure and it's an honour. I mentioned Timbuktu. Where is Timbuktu? It's in a country called Mali and it is known and it is regarded and reported as the mathematical university of the world. So any information you need about maths, you are going to get it from Timbuktu. And where's Timbuktu? It's in a country called Mali. And where is Mali? In the continent of Africa. Wow. The father of mathematics is widely known as Archimedes. And where was Archimedes from? Africa. So I'm just giving you I'm just giving you Mother Africa facts here this evening. And later on in the show, I'm going to bring in numbers and I'm going to mix them all up. But already I've mentioned numbers. The fact that the oldest clay tablets with maths written on them date back 4000 years ago. 195 countries make up the world. 54 of those 95 countries are found in the continent of Africa. This is all knowledge and information. And Alote, 
a famous writer, a famous Ghana writer, brought mathematics to Ghana in the 1960s. He integrated modern maths and sciences into the Ghanaian education system. So we've got the history, we've got the development. Now it's been it's been integrated into the Ghanaian education system so that all young people, all of our young people, they grow knowing about the history of maths and Africa. That is what we should be teaching in Black History Month. This is what we should be teaching about. And this is what I want to get out there. Because for me, this makes it more meaningful. Yes, we can talk about famous athletes and musicians and whatever, but why don't we bring maths to the forefront? Why don't we make maths come alive? And why don't we show the importance of Mother Africa on maths? What I suggest you do when the show is finished is just look at the continent of Africa. Get a map of Africa and just look at it. I'm looking at it now. And 54 countries, 54 countries make up the continent of Africa. The second biggest continent, the first is Asia. The second biggest continent, Africa. 54 countries, but there are only 195 countries in the world. So when you compare the number of countries in Africa to the number of countries in the world, if you don't want to round up or round down, it's about a quarter. Come on, that is amazing. This is the math show. So not only do I teach maths, not only do I teach GCSE maths, not only do I teach about the multiplication tables for year fours or year twos, it's the history of maths and the origins of maths that's made me who I am today. And it's exciting. It is really, really exciting. But we are going to have, we've got some facts coming up and get a pen, write some of these facts down because it's about enriching your brain. It's about enriching your knowledge so that after the show, you can then go and you can talk about what you have learned today. You can be proud if you are an African. If you're, but it doesn't matter where you're from, you can be still proud of what is going on. We're going to go for a short ad break. I'm going to play some more music. I'm going to carry on playing. I'm going to carry on playing the music that um, we started off with. It's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorites. So listen, enjoy, and I'll see you back on the other side. Can you hear it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you hear it on the station? Okay. Yeah. You, you haven't done anything different, have you? No, but can you hear it though? Hear the music. Yeah. I'm made in Ghana. I'm made in Ghana. You can take me to London. I'm made in Ghana. You can take me to Lagos. Oh, I'm made in Ghana. I'm made in Ghana. I'm made in Ghana. I'm made in Ghana. I'm made in Ghana, you can take me to London. Ah, I'm made in Ghana, you can take me to Lagos. Well, I'm made in Ghana. Sorry, listeners, I'm just getting excited about that song, okay? But you enjoy it. Cookie, a Caribbean experience you will never forget. Oh. He's warm, courteous, and provides a service at high standards. 
Bristol Pulpit Caribbean Catering provides for weddings, Christmas, funerals, and masses that day. We also do small parties. We provide a whole romantic meal for two with a restaurant feeling in your own home. Contact Bristol Pulpit on 07 415 432 486. That's 07 415 432 486. Let's make it a day. So, COVID-19, it's not too late to get vaccinated. You may have seen recent reports in the news that coronavirus cases are rising. COVID is still with us. And without all your vaccinations, you will not be fully protected against the virus. Vaccines are available for adults and children of five years old and up. Don't take any chances. Find your nearest vaccine site at rent.gov.uk. We Care Family Services, providing you with long-term life planning solutions, helping you to plan, prepare and protect your family, providing you with a range of services, including life insurance, enabling you to leave money for your loved ones and children, income protection, that provides you with a monthly income should you feel sick or have an injury, critical illness cover, providing you with a lump sum of cash should you suffer from a heart attack, stroke or cancer. We also provide a range of services, including mortgages, pensions, and business solutions, helping you to protect your finances, your home, and your lifestyle. Contact your local representative, Natasha, on 07 378 or email info at wecarefamilyservices.com. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at We Care Family Services and learn how you can protect your family from as little as £4 per month. We Care Family Services, plan, prepare and protect your family. Go to www.sovereigncomics.co.uk and get your latest issue of Mr. Number Beta's Mass Comic Book Series today. You are now tuned in to the Mr. Number Beta Show every Wednesday from 5.30 to 6.30pm on Chalk Hill Community Radio Station. Let's get mathematical. Hello and welcome back to the second part of the show. In the first part of the show that we started at half past five, I was just giving you um, some some background information about the continent of Africa. I gave you some um, some maths facts, some numbers, some statistics. For example, 195 countries make up the world today. 54 of those countries are in the continent of Africa. And Africa is one fifth of the total land surface of the earth. And from 54 countries, from 195, that is roughly a quarter. So a quarter of the world's countries are in the continent of Africa. And in Nigeria, the population, 223 million, 804,632. In Ghana, 34,121,955. In Sierra Leone, 8,791,092. And in the Seychelles, 107,660. These are just some data, some information, just to put to put the continent into some context. That's what this show is all about this evening. But let's talk some more numbers because it is the number beta show. It's the math show on Chalk Hill Community Radio Station. And we're going to be going through the summer. So if you want to keep up with your learning, I'm going to be doing some radio shows. I'm going to choose topics. There might be two or three topics in one where you will still be able to keep up with your learning. That is what parents want. That is what parents have asked me to do so that in the summer holidays, you might be going away, and it's good to go away. I want to go away. It's good to go away and to relax and to recuperate and, you know, get yourselves ready for a September when schools open again. But there are quite a few schools that are not closing. So quite a few schools are open. There's going to be different academies, football clubs, health and fitness, cooking and food. And, of course, there's going to be some maths clubs. And that's what we're going to be doing with Sovereign Comics. But let's get back to some of these mathematical facts. 
the oldest mathematical object found. Now look at, listen to this number. The oldest mathematical object found 35,000 years ago is the Lembombo bone. And that was found in a country called Swaziland. Let me say it again, the oldest, the oldest mathematical object found 35,000 years ago is the Lembombo bone. And that was found in Swaziland. And why is this mathematical fact, this object so important? Because on it, there were markings that showed ancient counting. That's why the Lombombo bone, and you can still see it, that's why it is so important. But 35,000 years ago, earlier, I mentioned 4,000 years ago, but now we're getting, but now we're getting 35,000 years ago. Can you see how far back history goes? This is, this is the importance and the brilliance of Mother Africa and when it comes to maths. The oldest example of arithmetic was found in Zaire. It's a country in Africa. The oldest example of arithmetic. What do we mean by arithmetic? Well, you, yes, sixes, you've just done your sats. You know what it means. But we teach arithmetic every day in the classroom. Arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fractions, how do you add together three four-digit numbers? How do you find one-third of 36? How do you add uh, two mixed numbers together? This is all basic arithmetic. And the oldest example of arithmetic was found in a country called Zaire. Now, that, once again, I'm just giving facts. It's not what I think, it's what I've read about and what I've been told and what I've been informed and what I've heard. And it does make me proud to be able to talk about it. The oldest example of arithmetic was found in Zaire. And today we are still teaching arithmetic. Now, isn't that lovely? We are still teaching arithmetic. We are still using what our ancestors what they brought, what they taught, what they discovered, what they wrote down, what they found, we are still using it today. And, you know, that for me is incredible. And this is not going to stop. I've said to you already, they are still uncovering artifacts from, um, from the Valley of the Kings in Egypt, where the pyramids are. And that's going to carry on going for years and years and years because of the way the ancient Egyptians buried their dead. Because of the way they buried their dead in the pyramids. There are, there are just so many. There, there's too much. There are so many parts to the pyramids that I don't think we're ever going to uncover what is truly in and underneath the pyramids. The 4,000-year-old Moscow papyrus contained geometry from Egypt. Why is this fact so important? Because of the pyramids. I mentioned it earlier, geometry, geometry, angles, triangles, measure. How did they, how did they construct the pyramids? If I'm constructing a triangle, I need my protractor, my pencil and my ruler, but they didn't. And they did it perfectly. That is incredible. The pyramids speak for themselves. But that is, imp that is incredible. Now, this, this next fact is my favourite. The largest desert in the world is the Sahara Desert. And where is it found? In Africa. The largest desert in the world is the Sahara Desert. And where is it found? It is found in the continent of Africa. 
Let's not go into the surface area of the Sahara Desert because I think those numbers will bam bamboozle you. But the largest desert in the world, the world is the Sahara Desert. And where's the Sahara Desert? It is found in the continent of Africa. And you can go to the Sahara Desert. It's very hot. So if you're going to go there, just be careful that you prepare and you plan. But the Sahara Desert is the largest desert in the world. And it's found in the continent of Africa. The longest river in the world, guess what it's called? It's the Nile. The longest river in the world is the Nile. And where is the Nile? In Africa. Let me just say that again. These last two facts. The largest desert in the world is the Sahara Desert. And that's found in Africa. And the longest river in the world is the Nile. Let me give you some, a measurement. 6,855 kilometers long. Now listen, 6,855 kilometers long. That's the world's longest river, the Nile. Right, let's put it into some context. And by using the word context, I mean, let me explain and let me get you to visualize what that means. You have got 100 centimeters equals one meter. 100 centimeters equals a meter. So in the primary and secondary classroom, you've got those long meter rulers, right? Well, that is that is 100 centimeters. Doors in our country, all doors in our country are two meters in height. Now, if they are an emergency exit door, then they are slightly taller. But doors in our homes have to be two meters in height. So if you imagine two of those meter rulers end to end, that is an average door. So if you imagine an average door, that is 200 that is 200 centimeters. Now, there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. There are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. How do I know that? Because the word kilo means 1,000. There are 1,000 meters in just one kilometer. So if you imagine 1,000 of those meter rulers end to end, that is just one kilometer. Now, the River Nile, which is the longest in the world, is 6,855 kilometers. I, 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 can't, I, I can't picture the enormity, the length of that River Nile. But what I do know is that doors in our houses are two meters in height. And that two meters is 200 centimeters. A thousand centimeters equals one kilometer. A thousand centimeters. But yet the River Nile is 6,855 kilometers long. That is the longest river in the world. In the world. And we've got the largest desert in the world is the Sahara Desert. And where are these two amazing feats of nature found? In Africa. But why am I talking about them? I'm looking at the maths behind them. I'm looking at the maths behind 6,855 kilometers. That is incredible. I am only 1.85 meters in height. So I'm just trying to see how many lots of me go into one, go into one kilometer. There's a lot of division there.
But I'm just trying to put you, I'm just trying to put it into context for you so that you've got an understanding of the enormity of the longest river in the world. And then Africa is home to 30% of the world's mineral reserves. Mineral reserves, minimum mineral reserves, coal, gas, 30% of the world's mineral reserves. Let's not start about the vegetables and the fruits that you can get, the mangoes, the pineapples, the coconuts, the okra, the yam. Oh my gosh, where do I start and where do I stop? 30%. That's just under one third of the world's the world's mineral reserves. I've given you percentages. I've given you fractions. I've given you thousands. I've given you kilometers. I've given you centuries. There are a hundred years in a century. There are a thousand years in a millennium. There are ten years in a decade. These are all mathematical vocabulary that represent numbers. And this is what the math show is all about. It's making it real. It's putting it into context. It's making it meaningful. It's making it useful. 30% of the world's mineral reserves are found in the home, my home of Africa. That's amazing. Well, listen, this afternoon, this evening, look how much information that you have been given on the radio. And I've put it into context. I've made it real. I've made it real life. I've explained to you about conversions. I've given you examples so that when you go away and you think and you ponder about what did Mr. Number Better talk about on the show today? You, you, you are a walking encyclopedia. You are a walking book of information, knowledge and philosophy and maths. But it doesn't stop there. It does not stop there. And there is so much, there is so much that I could be talking to you about. But because I want you to remember and retain, and I want you to regard Mother Africa and its mathematical origins, I don't want to bombard you with too much information and knowledge, but I've given you more than enough for you to be getting on with. I think the one thing that I would like you to take away is this, 195 countries make up our world today. 54 of those 195 countries make up the continent of Africa. 54, so it's about a quarter. One fourth of the total number of countries in the world are in Africa. And that is, that is maths. There's fractions there. We're, compar we're comparing, we're understanding. This is what makes maths so, so special. Africa is home to 30% of the world's mineral reserves, which is just under a third. And the longest river in the world is the River Nile. And that is 6,855 kilometers long. And I've just given you an example. The average door inside of your house is two meters in height. I am 1.85 meters. So I do not need to bend my head down when I go through a normal door. But there are some people who are taller than me that do need to bend their heads down. So what does that tell you? There must be at least two meters in height. But all of this information is designed to get you thinking about maths and the connection and the origins of maths with Africa. And it's been, it's been enlightening to you, but also to me, 
to remind ourselves about the importance of Africa on maths. And I've got another show. I've got another show where I'm going to be teaching you and telling you about the importance of women on the origins and the development of maths. The importance of black women on the development and the origins of maths. For example, Mary Seacole. I'm using her because she's more recent and relevant. And I've got a lot of young listeners. There's no point in me mentioning names of people who you've never heard of. But Mary Seacole, most people have heard of Mary Seacole. I know there are a lot of schools who have named their halls and their, and their rooms after Mary Seacole. And she was a nurse in the Crimean War. And she saved a lot of people with her nursing. And she was a black lady. But she has also been accredited with developing the Venn diagram because she was a business lady. But I'll go into that later on. But women and maths, they go together. There's a synergy. And the importance of women, black women, on the origins and the development of maths over the centuries is phenomenal. And it is outstanding. I'm even talking about NASA. One of the top people in NASA. And NASA, NASA deals with the spaceships going to the moon. One of the top people in NASA is a black lady. One of the top, if not the top, one of the top is a lady. So I never underestimate the power, the magnitude of the female brain. Because it, 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 it's just outstanding. There's no two words about it. And we are born of a woman and isn't that magical that to me is quite emotional actually but this is what we're talking about when it comes to mathematical facts and what's happening in our world today i want to finish off the show i've had several requests to um to give more examples of to give more examples of the multiplication tables and how we can help our young people to, um, to find them interesting, to find them exciting, and to know them. I have covered this before, but what I'm hearing from parents and from young children themselves is that you really want to know about how to teach your young children when it comes to the times tables. Because don't forget, year fours, when you start in September, so that these are the year threes presently, when you get into year four, about this time next year, you are going to be doing your MTC, which stands for the, multipl the Multiplication Tables Check MTC. Let's get you ready. I've started working with some schools, with some year threes, getting them ready for year fours, so that when they get in and start year fours, they've got an, they've got an added advantage. So how do I how do I teach the multiplication tables? Well, one of my favorite activities is to make learning the tables meaningful and purposeful and useful. And so what I do is I create a shop. Now, in my shop, all, all of my food items, they are cheap. But that's because I want to make it fun. And what I do normally is I pick a letter of the alphabet and then I find food that begins with that letter of the alphabet. And then I give each of those food items a price. And the price is a multiplication table. So, for example, today I was working in a school and we chose the letter Y. Now, it's really hard to find food that begins with the letter Y. But I found yam, I found yeast, I found yellow beans, I found yellow fish tail, yellow tail fish. 
there's a lot of food stuff that begins with the letter Y, yogurt. And so what I did, I wrote about seven of them down, and then I gave yam, for example, 12p, yogurt 5p, yeast 8p. And then next to each of the cost prices, I put multiplied by seven, multiplied by nine. So the children with the teachers had to work out the total amount of money each of those items cost. But what were they doing? They were bringing the multiplication tables alive. Because when you go shopping, food items have got a price. And you might buy more than one lot of that item. So you are using the multiplication tables. So that's one way parents and teachers and children of making learning the multiplication tables fun, engaging, interactive, exciting, but more importantly, purposeful and useful. That's one of my favorites. Another one of my favorites is where I draw a circle on the flip chart or the whiteboard. And then in the middle of the circle, I put a number. Let's say, for example, 48. And what you have to do is you have to write down as many calculations that you know make that number 48. So, for example, you could have four times 12, six times eight, three times 16. And because of commutative law, if you can have four times 12, you can also have 12 times four. So that's getting you used to working with two tables at once. That's my favorite. And I do allow children to put one times the number as well. Because for some children, if they, if they are not confident with their tables, but they know that one times 48 is 48, they are engaging they are able to take part in the activity. So that's the circle. Another one is where I've got my function machine. And my function machine is called Freddie. And Freddie could be a female, Frederica, and Freddie could be a male, Frederick. But Freddie is my function machine. And function machines make numbers come alive. So on another day, I, I drew a function machine so the function machine has got two arms, in arm and the out arm. And in the middle of the body, I put there multiplied by 12. So whatever number you feed into the machine, you times that number by 12, and then you get the answer that comes out. So if you feed five into the machine, and the function of the machine is multiplying by 12, five times 12, the answer is 60. But children love the fact that it's a machine and the machine is given the answers. And about 10 years ago, I actually made a real Freddy the function machine. And I put some children in the function machine and then we put numbers into the function machine. The children had to look at the number, know what their function and they had to work out the answer, write it on a piece of card and then chuck it out the out exit. That is a lot of fun. Can you imagine an assembly where you've got a real life function machine and children, adults, teachers, parents come up to the function machine? On the front of the function machine, you've got times in by seven. So whatever number you give into the machine, it multiplies it by seven and it's got to work out what the answer is. That is making maths come alive. And if you've got an Ofsted inspection imminent or you're going through one, and you want to impress the inspectors, do that. I'm telling you, do that. Make, make maths come alive in an assembly. Let them come up and put a card into the machine. And the children on the inside have to work out the answer. That shows impact and that shows purpose. So we've had, uh, we've had the shop. We've had Freddie the Function Machine. Another one, and, and we've had the shop, Freddy, the function machine, and so on. Another one is where I do true or false. And this one, the children love. For example, I might say six times seven, and then I've put there 41. Now, six times seven is not 41. So therefore, my answer is false. And so they put the letter F, and then they have to write the correct answer, which is 42. And I just give silly answers. But what that does, it's like it empowers the children 
because they want to beat Mr. Number Beta. Some of the answers are correct. I might put three times 12 is 36, so that's true. But another one that I did recently was uh, I did four times nine is 56. And the class were on the floor laughing. They were, how can four times nine be 56, Mr. Number Beta? That is definitely false. So I said to them, so what is the answer? It's 36, of course. But isn't that a nice way to engage with the young children? Another one, which is another one of my favorites, is the multiple choice, where I give them a calculation, five times 12, and then I give them a choice of three answers. They've got to tick the right one. This is making learning the tables more engaging, more fun, more worthwhile, more just more, more purposeful. We've made it come alive. But listen, whenever you want me to go through those again, I will do. Just have to drop me a message. Uh, you can use this number, 07535 644850, 07535 644850. If you want to ask me to cover a particular topic in the holidays, you can do that. Or if you want to drop me an email, Dr. Dr. Underscore knows it, N O S E Z I T at hotmail.com. Dr. Underscore knows it at hotmail.com. Dr. is Dr. Underscore knows it, N O S E Z I T at hotmail.com. Can I thank you very? I've had a couple of comments, but can I thank you? Thank you so much uh, for listening. Uh, to the Mother Africa uh, Mathematical Facts and the lesson. I really hope it's given you something to think about. You are now able to take your learning further. But if you want more, we can produce more for you. Have a great evening. Schools are finishing this week. It doesn't mean that learning stops for six weeks or five weeks. It means that you've got a break. You can have a lie-in. You can have breakfast in bed and so on. But learning does not stop. So please learn your tables, learn your facts, do some reading. If you're on the beach and you're playing volleyball, still do your tables. How many times can you get the ball over the net in one minute? Make maths come alive. Have a great evening. Thank you for listening and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye.